Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today because we're going to talk about the cargo ship problem and why this mess has not been resolved and it's not going to be resolved anytime soon. Uh, in fact, it's actually getting worse and uh, they're trying to make it look like it's not a problem. Uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the uh, subscribe button. Please hit the like button. And uh, don't forget, we have an email list. In the video description, there is a link that you can sign up and you can get on our email list. If you'd like more access to me, you can sign up for Patreon and you can get uh, uh, access to me through Patreon. I'm off the tip of the Huntington Beach Pier and once again, you've got visible cargo ships that are out here. And uh, there's an absolute ton. And as I drove down the coast, uh, there's, you know, you can count dozens right now just with your, you know, with the naked eye right now. Now, this was something that was supposed to be resolved long before now. And as we're in April of 2022, we've got a real problem with this because this is globally a huge, huge problem. Now, we saw companies like General Motors that said at the end of December, they said, hey, we're going to solve the supply chain issue. We're going to solve the delivery issue and we're going to cr increase deliveries for our company by 30% um, uh, this year. Well, that hasn't taken place, guys. In fact, uh, GM, the CEO last week, Mary Barra, just announced that they're cutting production back and they're also closing their uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana uh, plant that builds the Silverado for two weeks. Okay, hey guys, go home. Okay, so that's a huge problem, guys, right there. The supply chain issue has never been solved. One thing that they did because of things like the, the marine traffic app, they told these uh, vessels that they needed to stay outside of a 50, perim uh, 50 mile perimeter. So at 51 miles out, they are not counted in the queue for uh, Long Beach and for the LA port. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you, which is absolutely staggering, is that when you look at marine traffic, and it's a great app, it's free, when you look at this, take a look at this. Now, what you've got here is that everything in green is a cargo ship. That's a, a marine vessel that is basically delivering something technically. The other ones, you've got cruise ships, you've got personal uh, watercraft, things like that that are out there also. But the green ones are the cargo ships. Now, what they've done is they've had a huge amount of ships sit outside of the California coast, so they're not counted. But one thing they've also done is, let's slide down to Tijuana, is they've had people sit off the coast of Mexico. Now, this is international waters, and uh, it's off the coast of a foreign country, but they're not counting those ships right now. So in doing that, this is trying to deceive us all to make us think that there's no problem with this. Now, we have learned over the last couple months that there are huge issues with uh, diesel trucks and how the newer diesel trucks are the only ones that can go into the ports. Basically a 2010 uh, diesel truck and newer. And I've had a lot of truck drivers write me and this has to do with the uh, exhaust system. Now, the problem with these trucks is they're incredibly expensive to fix. They don't have the same life as the uh, older trucks, you know, and you can sit there and say, oh, they're better, they're this, they're that. But when you have trucks that can get a million miles on them and you've got trucks that they're talking about getting two, 300,000 miles, it's completely different and you're spending almost five times for the new vehicles. So there's that. The other thing is globally, we are seeing massive problems with supply chain issues. Now, here's the thing. When you looked at the Ukraine and Russia situation, we can talk about what they import and what they make. And, and you know, uh, Russia makes a ton of fertilizer and diesel fuel and things like that. But the problem with it is that they've been sanctioned, okay? And whether you're for that or not, what it's done, think about this. There were a million, a million, different uh, cargo uh, containers that were supposed to be shipped by rail, okay? They're not getting shipped, guys, and they're not getting shipped on, uh, by rail through Russia, so they have to circumvent that. Well, you just can't take a train in another direction, so you have to go by boat. 
Now, this has made these cargo ships completely backed up right now, guys, to where it is an absolute disaster, and they are completely, completely overwhelmed right now. No one's talking about this. No one's sitting there saying, oh, that makes sense. That's kind of crazy. So, one thing that's going on out here is there is a huge swell out here with the waves, and you're seeing massive waves right now. So, with this, think about everything that shipped. You know, um, uh, you know, with the Ukraine situation, I had no idea. You know, they're the number one exporter of neon. And you can say, well, what does that have to do with anything? Neon lights? Yeah, no, neon that's made for computer chips. There is a laser that uses neon in the making of computer chips. And it's going to make the computer chip debacle even worse right now. Now, now when you think about this, and you think about food, and you think about everything that we're missing out on right now, it's only going to be exacerbated by these problems. You've got food shortages that are coming, and these supply chains and these cargo ships will not solve this. There is a potential dock worker strike here in Southern California where there's 22,000 dock workers that could potentially go on strike. Now, you can sit there and say, oh, yeah, Dan, they haven't gone on strike yet. But guys, this is this is real. This, is, this could happen, you know, because their contract expires very soon and uh, they have not reached an agreement. And again, that will cause and wreak absolute havoc on uh, the ports when that happens. Now, when you look at everything that we've been told and how it's going to get resolved with um, these container ships and they're gonna work 24 seven and it's gonna be resolved, it hasn't been guys and it's there's nothing remotely close to this that's going to make it fixed anytime soon and people need to look at that now over the course of the last eight months we've all experienced the supply chain disasters uh, in our personal lives in our businesses clients you know just everybody you're starting to see restaurants that are admitting that not only do they pay more for things right now but they're having trouble getting things right now think about this oh zoltar's talking yeah zoltar let's go get our our fortune read by zoltar guys wonder if he's got the supply chain problem solved so what we're experiencing is like in rockland illinois there is a pizza place harris pizza that the owner of the uh, restaurant has said that he has to go to five and six different places just to source uh, products for his pizza. Uh, guys, that is horrible, guys. Now, I know that this is true because Fran uh, Glover, who runs Joseph Dreamhouse, think about this. She's got normal suppliers that she buys from and she has people that have dietary restrictions so they have to have certain products and certain vegetables and things like that. She has to go to five and six stores sometimes just to find, uh, you know, produce. And, and it's horrible. Not the local Walmart that's out all over the place, guys. And the other thing is, in the UK, McDonald's is cutting back on tomatoes, which tomatoes aren't really a big thing here at McDonald's in the United States, but there's a thing in uh, a burger in the UK called the Big Tasty. The Big Tasty uh, has tomatoes on it. Big Tasty, Big Tasty with bacon and uh, uh, they're cutting back on the tomatoes. And it's a big problem with this because how are people gonna react when there's only one tomato or no tomatoes on their big tasty? I have no idea. But we're seeing this more and more as a problem. Now, Congress has put together a, a, a bill where they wanna solve the supply chain problem. The, um, the story is below and Amy Klobuchar, she, um, is organizing something that she says has uh, support on both sides of the aisle. Okay, so be it. Read this article, because it's like three paragraphs. It's ridiculous. We're gonna solve this, and we're gonna demand that this is an issue that's, uh, that, that's worked out immediately. It has no substance, it has no plan. It is ridiculous right now to talk about this as if it's wishful thinking to solve this problem, because let's face it, guys, this is, uh, something that is not going away anytime soon. The Russian war has destroyed this. If you are not preparing your food right now, 
and planning on food shortages, you are, are absolutely kidding yourself because they've skirted things to make it look like it's okay, but you don't have produce in your stores. You don't have certain products in your stores. GM's not building cars. Things are behind right now on the chips and other things, certain things carry weight and hurt other things in this, uh, in our uh, economy and in the marketplace right now. And people don't want to accept that. They don't want to admit that, that this is a problem. And when you look at the international cargo ship problem, they're not getting unloaded fast enough. You're having uh, older, independent diesel truck owners that cannot even drive to the docks. Now I get people that write me and go, you just don't understand, Dan, we need to clean the environment, environment up. Okay, that's great, okay? That's fantastic. It's not gonna solve itself anytime soon. So this is only getting worse. And uh, I'm gonna drive up the coast, you guys, and show you some more because it's just escalated out of control. So I moved up the coast a little bit and I'm at uh, the Seal Beach Pier and you can't help but notice from the end of the pier, all the cargo ships that are out there completely visible by the naked eye. Now, one thing that's funny is that we were told that this whole problem was started by overspending. By global stimulus money, everybody bought so much that it created the supply chain mess and that's why everything got backed up, okay? Now, that doesn't hold water because if that was the case, people are not spending any money anymore. There hasn't been stimulus in a year and uh, we're still having this problem. In fact, it's, it's just worse. So with that being said, there is an expert on supply chain issues who, um, his name is uh, uh, Richard Littlefield of Cranfield University. And uh, I found this fascinating. This guy was talking about how, yeah, you may normally have a black swan event that would affect the uh, economy and it would affect uh, the supply chain issue, but it's much worse right now. And uh, it's like having 20 black swan events currently going on at the same time, or as he said, a flock of black swans. Now, we've looked at certain things in business with automation, with AI, with artificial intelligence, that they say can solve certain things. Well, when you put artificial intelligence to this problem of the supply chain and of the cargo ships, it doesn't solve it. This, I think, is man-made. I think that this has been created. I think it's been created to slow down the economies. And here's the thing. If it was just a problem, a regional problem, and if it was just a labor problem here in Southern California, that would be one thing. But take a look at this. Take a look at ports. We'll go to marine traffic and we'll look at different ports around the world. As you go up the West Coast, you go past Vancouver and you can clearly see that there's less traffic than there was before. And then as you get to Alaska, you can see it's nothing like it used to be. Anchorage is up there in the top left. And then when you go to the heavyweights and you look off the coast of China, you know, you can see Australia lower left. And then uh, you've got uh, United States in the top right. You can look and see Africa, but look at all the boats, guys. Look at all those cargo ships. And as you zoom into China, you can just see how much traffic they've got and what they're shipping. I mean, it's crazy. The cool thing is you can click on each of those dots and it'll tell you exactly what those boats you know, their destination is and who owns it. Now, the one thing that people asked a lot about was, what about Florida and Texas? So clearly not as much traffic over there, but once you get things shipped to Florida, then you've got to uh, ship it across the country via boat or rail. It's very expensive. Now, I find this stuff fascinating because certain arguments that they have is that here in the States, we spend more money. And where there's such a demand for product and services that uh, we're creating this uh, problem with the supply chain, which is utterly ridiculous because this was all driven by the stimulus money that was given out over the last year. Now, there haven't been stimulus checks in the last year, but eight months ago, we had this problem that got started and has not ceased. Now, you can mask it. You know, I had a brother, I have a brother, that used to, when he was a kid, take all his dirty clothes and put it in his closet until it would be piled so high he couldn't do anything and nobody noticed he had dirty clothes, okay, until he had nothing to wear. 
Well, that's kind of what's happening out here right now, guys, is that you can mask it, you can say that this is not an issue, but it is. Here you've got a cruise ship out here, which I get an absolute kick of, kick out of, is that cruise ship right there. No one's paying to, you know, saving 10 years to go on a cruise, to be in Long Beach Harbor. That ship right now is parked there because of the fact that uh, there's no room uh, in the port for them just to sit there parked. They need it to unload ships and they're still behind. So the argument with business that this was all man-made by too much purchasing makes no sense when you see the global, uh, the global problem. There was a conference in Tampa, Florida this last week, the Florida Supply Chain Conference, and they determined that this is not gonna be solved for quite some time, and that it's going to be an absolute issue for years to come, 2022 and 2023. So take a look at the article, but here's the thing, guys. When do you take these warnings seriously? If you were told that there was going to be a shortage of products for your business, and, and again, all my clients, if they sell anything complex that relies on three, four, five different suppliers, I tell them to get rid of it right now. Do what you can do to stop selling this product because you're only going to create a problem. Oh my gosh, Janet, it's 20% of our revenue. Well, what happens when you sell this stuff and they're half done and people start suing you because they're not completed? Oh, that's a good way to look at it. It's a great way to look at it. But also, your family's supply chain. Storing food, storing water, you know, I have my guy coming today to do the assessment on everything I've got for my house and for my kids and uh, for when trouble shows up. If we had to stay there for months, uh, we're prepared for this, okay? Do you guys have that? Okay, how stupid is that? You know, do you have a safety plan? Again, how stupid, is mock that. Mock knowing where your children are at and having a plan for your girlfriend and your loved ones. Mock that, so. Now I moved down to another pier. I moved down to Long Beach Memorial Pier and I wanted to show you guys just how close the container ships were. I mean, right there off the coast, guys. Just backed up, sitting there. You've also got a couple cruise ships parked out there. Now, again, uh, we're seeing a lot of different things with the supply chain that are real problems right now. Uh, in Ukraine, First things first, I had no idea uh, that Ukraine had such a huge industrial uh, manufacturing uh, uh, infrastructure with their country. There is a tremendous amount of things. They make cardboard, a tremendous amount of cardboard. They make uh, boilers. They make metal products in addition to a bunch of other stuff. But they're completely shut down when it comes to this right now. They're really not doing anything. There's a great article about that. And then when you talk about Russia, Russia is one of the largest uh, producers of fish, wild caught fish in the entire world. And if you've eaten fish around the world, you know, odds are you've eaten some Russian fish. That's what's crazy. It's cod, um, crab, pollock, uh, you, know, it, you know, and then the other caviar and all the other stuff that they, they uh, sell also. But absolutely fascinating that uh, uh, they produce all this, but this is creating such a huge problem with uh, the supply chain issue that states like Maine, think about this, and Maine is known for its fish production and its lobster and its crab and things like that. They are seeing huge problems right now because they're not gonna be able to uh, import uh, the Russian uh, fish right now. So they're gonna be completely backlogged and uh, restaurants are gonna suffer and prices are gonna be sky high right now that they're talking about. So that's fascinating. And then when it comes to the ports, you've got uh, Gene Soroka who runs the Port of Los Angeles who says basically that uh, uh, he sees this as being the calm before the storm and that they've got pretty much control of it right now and uh, whether you believe that or not guys, I'm sure you see a lot of boats I can count here just from standing on the pier but he says that uh, things are getting better and it's great and not to worry and uh, you know you're gonna have some springtime problems but right now he sees that things are good one thing I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to take a look at the uh, the ports in uh, Ukraine and the ports in Russia and see if we can see uh, anything from the app and show that to you guys. So let's take a look at that. Now, Russia has multiple ports, but you can see that the activity is kind of light 
as compared to some of the areas around in the different countries. And then when you get to Ukraine, you can see their main port of Odessa just doesn't have that much traffic at all. And you've got the other things that lead back into Russia that are fairly busy. But again, because of what's going on over there, I'm sure it's a lot less than it would normally be. Again, guys, this problem is only globally and it's only getting worse. So if you think it's just in your area, it's not. This is going to create shortages like we've never seen in our lifetimes, ever, 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 ever. You know, so I just wanted to do a quick video today for you guys to show you that this problem is not going away anytime soon. So please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button. I can drive you guys down to the port again if you want me to do all that and show you everything backed up. But if you don't get it from these ships, from the coast, from Seal Beach Pier, okay, you guys just aren't gonna get it at all because this is a real problem that's not going away anytime soon. So warning after warning after warning globally, okay? And I don't care if you live in the UK, Italy, South America, somebody new from New Zealand, uh, Australia, by the way, I want to tell Jess from Australia who sent me a really lovely note that it took one month for me to get that note. One month to get mail from Australia to get it to me. And I appreciate that. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Don't forget the uh, uh, fundraiser for Joseph Dreamhouse, April 11th, Anaheim Stadium. Get your tickets. Uh, join the email list. The link is in the video description below to join the email list. If you want more access to me, sign up for Patreon. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon. Just wanted to do a quick supply chain video so you could see that this cargo ship mess is a mess, guys. It's much, much worse, and it's not going away, and they can mask it, but it's here to stay, guys. Be prepared. Get yourself ready.